the most exquisite King James Bibles, meaning the best made, the most beautiful, um, definitely the most unique King James Bibles in my collection. I'm going to be doing a review of six Bibles today. First, we're going to start out with the Cambridge Bible, sort of a turquoise Bible, very beautiful. Then we'll be looking at an R.L. Allen Bible with red leather. And uh, then we'll be doing two different Bibles from the Church Bible Publishers. Uh, definitely both beautiful Bibles. And finally, a Schuyler Bible, uh, one that was sent to the ministry here. And then the number six Bible is going to be a surprise. So you have to wait till the end. Don't skip ahead. But I'm going to show you the Bibles that in my collection that are definitely the most beautiful. Um, they're very, these are the top of the line, so they're a little bit more expensive than your average uh, dime store Bible, dollar store Bible nowadays. But uh, they're expensive for a reason. The quality of these Bibles is very high level, uh, very fine leathers used, very fine binding process. Um, you'll see why that these are the more expensive line of King James Bibles. Um, in my personal opinion, I think the most important investment that you can make is a King James Bible. Having said that, I have my main preaching Bible, which I don't have here today at the office, but uh, it's a Cambridge King James Bible. And um, it's in my best KJV Bibles uh, video. I have it in that one, and I've used it for many years. It's not the best one. It's not the very highest, uh, best quality Cambridge, but... It was a good Bible, and it's falling apart uh, now. But uh, as the old saying goes, if you have a Bible that's falling apart, then you're not. Um, a Bible that's falling apart doesn't, you know, belongs to someone who isn't falling apart. Is how the saying goes. But I'm going to show you today a review of some of the top Bibles out there on the market today, and uh, some really neat things to show you. So let's start out with the Cambridge. All right, here's our first Bible. This beautiful Cambridge right here sort of a sort of a blue collar here uh, you can see the spine there and the blue ribbons that come out there are two blue ribbons and I love the the sort of the double collar gilt edge here of course you have your gold gilt edge but then when you open it up it turns sort of a turquoise blue very beautiful. So I'll show you the text of this one. First you have your presentation page here. Let me get to it. Well, that's a family record. Pardon me. These are brand new Bibles, so the things are a little bit uh, sticky yet. But uh, there you have this Bible belongs to. Okay, I'm going to zoom in a little bit here so we can get a better look at this Bible. So you have the presentation page, then you have the family record. Children, marriages, more marriages, grandchildren, and deaths here. And then it goes into basically the dedicatory translator to the reader, dedicatory to King James there. The translators were just simply um, dedicating their work. Uh, they weren't, it's not that they were taking attention away from the Lord or anything. They were just thanking King James for providing his protection, royal protection while they did their work. That's what that was about. But then you get into the text here and you can see it's a pretty good font, uh, sort of a large print. And uh, center column references here. And a, not a very wide margin, but not too bad. Through the Old Testament. Then, of course, you get up into the, the New Testament. We'll go there. And you have your words of Christ in red. I'll zoom in a little bit more again so you can see in great detail. Very clear. Very nice dark print. Again, a lot of the really cheap Bibles that are out there, they're very hard to read. And then, of course, you get into the back here. You have a very nice concordance. We'll go to the book of Revelation. 
And then you come over here to the end, Revelation chapter 22. If I can get there. There you have the end. And it gets right into the concordance. And the thing I like about the Cambridge Bibles, mine that I use all the time in my preaching, um, it has a very extensive concordance, as you can see here. It's a lot of uh, pages there, the concordance. Then you have the Cambridge Bible maps. Tells you what each of the maps are right here. And uh, different cities of interest and things. And again, you get into some of the pictures here, the, the maps in the back. Very nice full color maps. And you go back through the maps and then you have a few pages of blank pages there. If you're a Bible believer, you can write all of the different notes and things down like I've done and many Bible believers do. And here in the back, I'll zoom in on this so you can see the, the number, the stock number. Right there. That's the model number of this King James Bible. Um, very beautiful, very nice Bible. I really love that turquoise blue edge there that actually turns gold like that. Very neat feature, a very supple feel to it. Um, I'm not going to get into a lot of the, the details of how that they're made and whatever else, but a very nice uh, feeling. You can roll the, the leather cover up like that and it comes right back. It is a uh, goatskin leather cover right there. So very beautiful Bible from Cambridge and uh, definitely a fan of Cambridge King James Bibles. So there's that one. Definitely a beautiful Bible. Now we'll go on to the R.L. Allen King James Bible. All right, here we have the R.L. Allen Bible. Uh, another very nicely made Bible. A very expensive Bible, but they're, they're worth the money, I believe. You can see the blue ribbon markers. There's three of them here. and a Nice and long. And this is what would be called a full gap Bible. It goes a lot longer here and um, again we have the gold gilt edge right there like that and you open it up and it is red in color very nice this one is um, Mariva calfskin leather down there also very very supple you can fold the cover up like that and it just comes right back, very soft leather, very nice finish to it. We'll go into the inside here. Again, you have a few blank pages at the beginning. There's your presentation page right here. Let me zoom in a bit so we can see it a little bit better. Presentation page. Family record here, children. Marriages grandchildren, and deaths here. Get into the Holy Bible, King James Version here. Again, dedicatory to, to King James. And this one does not have, I don't think it has the translator to the reader. No, it does not. So it has the dedicatory, the epistle dedicatory right here, but does not have the translators to the reader. And... Um, basically the table of contents here. Uh, table of signs used in the book, different ways that you can actually show the pronunciation of the different words. This is a sort of a helpful thing. I'll zoom in here so we can see this a little bit better. Uh, many languages will have lines or dots or things above letters and it helps you to pronounce how, know how to pronounce that vowel mostly. Well, the King James Bible, this one does have those. You can see here, it has a lot of those. So they're rather interesting. I know my Cambridge is that way. But uh, the text, a little bit smaller than the Cambridge, but it has wider margins. You can see this. Still have the center column references here in the middle. Very nice 
very clear, very dark print. If you like to write some notes in the side margin, this would be a good one for you. Um, trying to think here if this is, I don't think this is a red letter edition if I remember correctly. No, this is not a red letter edition, so you can see here in John chapter 8, um, verse 43, Jesus speaking, he says, Why do ye not understand my speech, even because ye cannot hear my word? So it's all black. So this is not a red letter edition. Uh, my old Cambridge that I preach out of is, is the same way. It is not a red letter edition. Uh, some people might not like that, but never really bothered me all that much. But you go back here to the end of the book of Revelation, chapter 22. See if we can get there. New pages kind of stick together a little bit. It'll give me a minute here. There we have at the end. And next we have Dictionary of Scripture Proper Names. So you have a little dictionary in the back there, which is nice. Some more proper names. And then after that, you get into Subject Index. Comes after that. Subject Index to the Holy Scriptures. And you go through that. Kind of an interesting thing. And then you get into the concordance to the Holy Scriptures right here. So definitely a lot more material in the back to help the reader than the Cambridge had. And I'll show you another nice thing that this has that my Cambridge, the other Cambridge there does, does not have. Um, here we have the New Oxford Bible Maps, right here. Well, not, not real bad, but not quite as high quality as the Cambridge Bible that we previously looked at. So if Bible Maps are something very important to you, then you might want the Cambridge rather than this one. There's, of course, the index to the maps here, some blank paper, paper. but then you get into this which I have in my actual Cambridge Bible that I preach out of. Not the one that I showed earlier, but this is very nice. They have all this note paper here um, for taking notes on specific subjects of the Bible. You can really write out a lot of nice things. You have a few more blank pages here in the back of this R.L. R. L. Allen Bible. And that's it. So all in all, I'd say a very beautiful Bible. Definitely a very, again, a very soft the texture of the leather is very, very smooth. It's not a, a uh, rough finish or anything. Um, just a very nice Bible. The, the full yap type of a thing here is, is good. I have older Bibles that this starts to wear out after a while and it'll start to kind of chip and things. But then again, it'll do that with just regular covers as well. So, but this sort of... Uh, I guess protects the edge a little bit better, plus it also makes it really nice when you open it up. It really lays out sort of nice like that. So, again, a very beautiful Bible. So, there's the R.L. Allen. You can get kind of an idea of how big it is with me standing here. Um, really nice Bible. really like it. It's kind of the uh, USA Bible. You know, you have the white text and the red cover and the blue ribbons here. The red, white, and blue. So now we'll go on to two of the church or church publisher, church Bible publisher, King James Bibles. Let's take a look at these. All right, here we have two church Bible publisher, King James Bibles. This one here and that one underneath with the ministry name on it. This was sent to us as a gift. I'll compare the two of them. But we'll start out with this one, this nice brown one sort of a interesting collar of brown uh, very nice cover again the full yap much wider cover and uh, this one has three gold ribbons to it gold gilt edge this one does not change color when you open it up 
Okay, it's not the, the two-tone looking thing or whatever, but still very nice, very beautiful. Um, very nice supple leather. Little, a little bit thicker leather than I would say the other two that we previously looked at, the Cambridge and the R.L. Allen. Um, very kind of a sturdy feel to it. Very nice Bible here, Church Bible Publisher, there's CBP, authorized King James. So let's take a look at this one. Put it down. The ribbon's out a little bit better here. Of course, you have a few blank pages. And there you have this Bible was presented to. Zoom in a little bit here so we can see it better. And there, I would say it's a little bit more ornate than the Cambridge and the R.L. Allen. The family record, children, marriages, marriages, grandchildren, and deaths in the family there. There's their card, Church Bible Publishers. But uh, here we get into translators to the reader. And I don't know if this one has the dedicatory in it or not. I think it does. I think I'm seeing it here. Yes, it does. All right there's the dedicatory. You get through that table of contents and we go into the book of Genesis chapter 1. This text here resembles very much the Cambridge sort of a uh, not a real wide margin but it's a it's a larger print a little bit easier on your eyes if you're a little up in years but uh, very nice no center column references that's a one difference between the Cambridge and this church Bible publisher Bible. We'll go back here to the New Testament. And it is a red letter edition. Right there you can see it. There you can see the red letter. Back to the book of Revelation. You see a lot of red letter here. But the Lord is speaking to John. Find our way here to Revelation 22. The end. And we go into a concordance. A nice, I'd say a little bit larger print than the Cambridge. But the uh, equally probably as big as the Cambridge Concordance. Goes the whole way to that's a map. Let's see if I can get to the end of it here. Some more blank pages in there. Yeah, this whole thing here is a concordance. So pretty extensive concordance in this Church Bible Publisher Bible. And then you get into the maps. Bible maps, whoops, went past the page there. Bible maps, list of maps. And this one actually has some of the map index stuff before you get back here to the actual maps. But then you get to the maps here and we'll take a look at this. Very nice maps. Well, I would say pretty good. And I think that they're a little bit more clear and, and uh, I like the coloring on them. Um, I'd say even a little bit better than the Cambridge and definitely better than the R.L. Allen King James Bible. So you get through those different maps there and there and you have a few blank pages and that's it. So and here in the back it has Talks about the leather there. Water buffalo, genuine water buffalo. So, there is this one. Again, a nice sort of a nice texture to the leather. Definitely of the 
the three so far that we've looked at, this one feels, you know, pretty much the heavy, like the heavy duty one of the three. Very, very well made. So we'll set this off to the side, and now we'll look at the one that was gifted to this ministry by Church Bible Publishers. I had a brother send this to me, but it's sort of a distressed look to the leather. I didn't let it out in the sun and let it crack or anything. Um, but that's just the way that the leather was was made for this one. Again, we have three very nice gold ribbon markers right there. Here we have a nice gold gilt edge. Again, it's not the two-tone like the Cambridge and the RL Allen, but still very nice. A couple of blank pages. We have the same exact presentation page going through, so we won't bother looking at that again through to the deaths. Again, the same translator to the reader, epistle dedicatory. But the difference with this one, there's the dedicatory after the translator to the reader page. The difference with this one is that we have, here's Genesis chapter 1, Genesis chapter 4 here, and this one definitely has wide margins. This is a note taker's King James Bible from Church Bible Publishers. I reviewed one of these years ago and definitely a neat style. Um, for a preacher like myself, I like to write a lot of things in the side margin, so this really will come in handy if I ever get around to retiring my old King James Bible. This is a beautiful one here. No center column references of any kind. You just have to do that work yourself. Write them over here. Um, very, definitely a neat concept there. You don't need a study Bible when you can kind of make your own studies. And it is a red letter edition. So there you have that. Now let's go back here to the book of Revelation, chapter 22. Let me get back into here. New Bibles are hard to turn in sometimes. The end of the New Testament, right there you have it. Again, a nice place for notes right there. A few pages for note taking if your margins weren't enough. <laughs> and then you get into the Bible maps, biblical world of the patriarchs. Very similar to the other church Bible publisher Bible. I really like these maps. They're very clear. I love the real bright, vivid colors on them. Same thing basically as the other one there. And then you have a few blank pages. So this one has no concordance. So again, if that's a problem, well, you can get another style or just have a concordance and write things out. But uh, a very nice, very beautiful Bible. I really like the collar of this one and the distressed leather is very nice on it. A nice thick Bible. You compare that to, to this one. Here, you can see that the note taker's Bible is a, probably a little tiny bit thicker, maybe very close to being same, the same, but this the brown one's a little bit bigger, a little taller, but a very nice Bible. Both of these are very nice Bibles, as you can see. So here's these two. Very nice. Again, you can see the, the size of them. Get the, this one like this so you can see the ribbons, both gold ribbons, both very nice, beautiful Bibles. So let's go on to the last of our five, and uh, then we'll get to the surprise Bible. And here we have it, the last of the five, and certainly not the least. We have this beautiful Bible gifted to the ministry. It is a, I thought that was Schuler, but it's actually pronounced Schuyler, from what I understand. Nice, very nice black Bible. Again, very extremely supple leather. Very nice. The red interior and things. It is a goatskin leather cover. Beautiful three red ribbon markers. Again, we have the nice, very nice gold gilt edge 
right there, very nice and shiny. You open it up and it's red. I love that sort of a two-tone type of a thing. We'll go in here to the beginning. I, again, I love the, the red and the black and the gold stripe around there. It's really nicely made, very fine Bible. And this one, I'd say, takes the prize for the most ornate um, inside. There you have your presentation page. Marriages, births, deaths. So I don't have anything for grandchildren, but there's that. It is the Schuyler King James Bible contents right here. Uh, here you have the translators to the reader. The epistle dedicatory comes first, then translators to the reader. Goes on for a little while there. And then you get into the book of Genesis. And this is where the Schuyler really kind of steps out ahead of the other ones. I really love that old woodcut look of the beginning letter of the first verse of a chapter. And they do this throughout the whole Bible, which is really a lovely feature. I really like that. Really neat attention to detail. It's sort of a maroon collar if you can't see that. Don't know if the camera's picking that up all that well. But a very beautiful, this is a, you have some of the um, cross references down in here instead of a center column. And then it's a wide margin on each side and on the top and the bottom. This is what my current preaching Cambridge King James Bible looks like. But again, just a, a beautiful, I love the, the large letter like that at the beginning of each chapter. Very nice. Has a, just a beautiful look to it. We'll go here to the New Testament. And this is a red letter edition. As you can see right in here, this is red. Not, it's, it's not a real bright red. I've, I have some King James Bibles that are a very uh, extremely bright red uh, lettering there. The, the, the font is very bright red. Um, let me show you one here. Let me just grab this quickly just to show you what I'm talking about. Okay, this is an older one that I have. So I got a little bit... Uh, little stained here on the edge because I had it out in a kayak the one time and I did a sermon called righteousness but uh, a little bit of fading up in here too from that got a little wet but you can see how bright that that text is there as you can see it's a very very bright red as opposed to this this one is not nearly as vivid and of course this is a large print this is not but just to show you it's a very sort of a subdued red letter edition so we'll go here to the end the book of Revelation and we get into there we are here Revelation chapter 22 doesn't say anything about the end right here, but uh, that is the end of the King James Bible. King's English, a glossary of terms used in the King James Bible. Very unique. I was very interested to see this. And they define things. Then you get into, after that, you get into the concordance. Uh, very small font. Um, definitely not for good if you have, if you're an elderly person has some issues with your eyesight. And you get into some note paper, which I really like. Again, that's a great feature, especially for a preacher that, that uh, likes to take, make sure that I have some of my better sermon notes written out. Or if you just like to study the Bible. There you have Bible maps. Index here are the Bible maps. And then here you have the actual different maps. 
some more unique things in here than some of the other Bibles. This is a definitely an interesting little kind of a chart. More maps. I have a lot of maps in this one. I think a little bit more than the other Bibles. And then the index to the maps. And then you have a few blank papers. And that is it for the Schuyler Bible. Um, definitely a nice Bible. Uh, beautiful Bible. I love the, the contrasting there, the, the gold and the, and the beautiful, if I can get that one to stop sticking, the gold and the beautiful red ribbon with the black. The one issue I have just from the outset though is that right there, that is called a Jerusalem cross is used in Catholicism. I'm not a, really a big fan of that. Um, there they have it as well. They actually, the Catholic Church actually has one called the, a translation called the Jerusalem Bible and they have that exact symbol on it. Um, the Knights of the Equestrian Order use that symbol as well. So uh, I don't think it's a sin uh, to have that or something, but I just, I don't really like a Catholic symbol on my King James Bible. That would be my one big beef with this Bible, other than that, it's very nice. All my papers are falling out of it. So that's the Schuyler Bible. Definitely a very beautiful, very unique Bible. Again, you can see the sides of it. Beautiful red ribbon sticking out of the bottom there. Really a nice one. I was very impressed with this one. Um, not, not as big, the, the yap here, the leather, is not quite as long as some of the other ones that we reviewed previously. But I'll just do a quick comparison between these five Bibles, and then we'll get to the surprise Bible at the end that you've been waiting for. All right, so here we have the five, all very nice Bibles. We have the Schuyler, the Cambridge, the R.L. Allen, and then the two church Bible publisher, the King James Bibles. And uh, which one would I recommend the most? Well, I would say for the, the beauty of the font, the Schuyler definitely wins that. Um, again, you can see some of the size comparisons here. As far as uh, overall feel and finish and everything, um, for sort of the most supple one, I would say probably the R.L. Allen is probably the most supple, followed very closely by the, the Cambridge and then the Schuyler. These two up here are a little bit more heavy duty, more, more beefy, you know, just they feel a little bit stronger, a little bit tougher. Um, as far as the Bible maps are concerned, definitely these two up here, followed by this one, and then I'd say probably maybe this one and then that one is last. As far as the note taking capabilities, well, definitely your note taker's Bible up here is uh, very nice. Um, but then this one here with the wide margins all the way around, the, the Schuyler Bible is also a very nice Bible for that purpose. Um, the R.L. Allen eh, is okay. You can get some things in the, in the margin there. The Cambridge, not a whole lot of room there. And then the other, the, the Brown Church Bible Publisher Bible, definitely not going to be doing much writing in there. And it does not have any kind of center column references. As far as the quality of ribbons, the Church Bible Publishers are very nice. I like the gold ribbon, sort of a unique one. And of course, they both have gold ribbon, like that, very nice and long. The RL, RL or the, uh, excuse me, the Schuyler, I love the, the red ribbons. Those are very nice. The RL Allen, the blue, three blue ribbons are also very, very beautiful. I love how it contrasts with the red. Very nice. And of course, coming in last would be the Cambridge with only two ribbons, but still very nice. So, uh, which one would I recommend? Which one would I say to spend your money on if you're a Bible believer? Well, this one, this one, and this one. R.L. Allen, Cambridge, and Schuyler. All three of these Bible publication companies also publish uh, new versions that trace back to the Vatican. So I take issue with that. 
This one has a Catholic cross right here, the Jerusalem cross, that you can see. I take issue with that. But when you give your money to these three right here, and ironically, these three are the most expensive. Some of these are a few hundred dollars, actually. Um, I'm not going to put up the prices because they'll, they're subject to change. So, But they're a couple hundred dollars each. They're not cheap. Okay, These are very expensive Bibles down here. And your money is going to people that are publishing new versions. I take issue with that. So which ones would I recommend? I would recommend to a Bible believer that you go with church Bible publishers. These are people that only print the King James Bible. They do not print anything else. They make beautiful, very nice King James Bibles. There are a lot of different options that you can get. Different collars of leather, different qualities of leather. You can get different types of, you know, printing like that. Note takers Bibles. You can get all sorts of different Bibles from church Bible publishers. Um, I am not paid to say this. I don't even know anybody there, but I've been buying from local church Bible publishers, recommended them for a while, and then church Bible publishers kind of split off from local church Bible publishers. And these guys make a very quality Bible, and you aren't going to spend hundreds of dollars uh, to buy one. They're a lot more affordable than these ones, these three options down here. These three options are very expensive. These are cheaper. They're just as tough, um, probably even a little bit tougher, just the way that they're built. The way that they're made, they're, they're made with a very high quality process. And uh, your money's not going to go to people that are going to print the new versions. So that's my recommendation. All right. So what is Bible number six? What's the surprise Bible? Hmm. Uh, I don't know. Might just give you a little hint. <laughs> Let's take a look at the reproduction 1611 King James Bible. Because when it comes to exquisite, beautiful Bibles... This one here behind me, the big one, kind of uh, wins the prize for the most exquisite King James Bible. Let me show you. All right, here we have it, the 400th anniversary edition, translated from 1604 to 1611. So the 400th anniversary has come and gone for the King James Bible. But it comes in this very nice old, this case here, not old, but this comes from in a nice case and I'll show you the really unique feature of this thing. If I can get it out of this thing here quick. It weighs a pretty good amount. One of the reasons why they have it in this case, let me just set it down there, is because down here in the bottom, if you can see that, this little piece of uh, wood or something, I guess, with leather on it, actually keeps the pages from... Uh, settling down and ripping the spine. Uh, it's why if you have a really big Bible or a really big dictionary, you should really lay it on its side unless you have something like this that actually goes in underneath. In other words, it would sit in underneath here and rest here to keep these pages from, from falling down onto the shelf. And when it does, it'll start to rip out up in here. It'll rip the binding. So very thoughtful way that they did that. Very nice. Just set this thing off to the side. And here we have this very nice King James Bible. It's a, got a nice embossed front cover on it there. Let me zoom in a little bit so I can so we can see a little bit better what that looks like. You can see very nice embossing on there. Now we'll back out here a little bit more. This does not have any kind of, uh, that's the brother that sent it to me. Um, this does not have any kind of ribbon markers. Not exactly something that you're going to be reading every day. But, um, or carrying with you. Again, you have some of the original pictures and things here. Holy Bible. And there you have the dedicatory with the way it would originally looked in 1611. And then you had the translators to the reader here.
get through this, we'll get to the book of Genesis. Here you have the different um, times of reading the Bible and, and things, different months. Just a reading plan to get through the Bible. And you can see there, I don't know if that'll show up or not, but, but there's red printed in with it. The table and calendar expressing the order of psalms and lessons to be said at morning and evening prayer. People used to be a lot more uh, fervent for the things of the Lord back in the old days. Get another royal, royal seal here. Here you have some of these drawings and things. The genealogies of Holy Scripture. Again, Noah here and the sort of the tree that goes up through there. The Tower of Babel, going back through to Shem. It's very interesting. And then you have Ham and his descendants here, Japheth and his descendants here. I'm sorry, that's Canaan. I was thinking that was Japheth. I guess Japheth will be Terah, the Midianites. Um, there's Lot, his wife that got turned into the pillar of salt. And, you know, keep in mind that all of these things, when they were printed originally in 1611, these things were all literally woodcuts. They were carved, relief carved, and then the paper was... Uh, pushed against it with ink. Just amazing how that they would have printed these things back then. There you have Jacob, Simeon, all these different Bible genealogies, Aaron and Judah, we'll get through this. Genealogies are very important to the Lord. David, how his descendants came down through. Alphabetical table of Canaan and the borders adjoining the uh, names. It's obscured the text. It's, oh, here we go. Here's some maps and things of, of uh, the land of Canaan. And there you have the first book of Moses, Genesis, right here. And um, just to understand what we have, is we have here, let me bring this in a little bit so you can see the text. What you have here is called the Gothic font. All right. This is sort of the Roman font that we're used to seeing here. This is a Gothic font right there. And, but you have Old English spelling a lot of times. Um, sun, moon, and stars right there. So... There's another N and an E in there because English as a language was being still formed in 1611. It was at its pinnacle and it's come down ever since. If you don't believe me, look at the modern woke movement or <laughs> anything like that. Um, but down here, I'll just show you verse 3. It says, And God said, Let there be light. And there was light. You say, But it says fade. No, there was in the Gothic there that sometimes the S looked like a F. You know, there you have an S, an upper uppercase S. The Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. So there were S's, but then there's, you know, there was English was a much more um, fuller language. It was much more beautiful in 1611, a very poetic language and things. Unlike the modern Bible trend of dumb it down so it can be appreciated by the guy on the street. Well, that's not really a scriptural thing. But you go through here. I'll have to kind of lay this flat a little bit more. Not something that you can move around very easily. Um, it's First Chronicles. There you have Psalms. Again, see, it's kind of like the Schuyler thing. They, they take this first letter and they make it beautiful like that. Kind of a neat thing that the Schuyler Bibles do. I do like that. Um, 
This is Isaiah. It looks like Isaiah, but you can it's Isaiah. And you can read this. You have to just get used to once your eyes get used to the the Gothic font and the spelling of the old the way that the English was there. You can read it just fine. People say, oh, you can't even read it. Oh, yes, you can. It's not that bad. And then between the Old and the New Testament, you have the apocryphal books put in for historical purpose. They did not put them in as um, inspired scripture. Okay? So here you have Malachi, and there you have Apocrypha. So the Apocrypha it was between the Testaments in your King James Bible. All right, the Church of England, the, some of the Anglican guys that were on the translation committee, they said, oh, you know, we have rules that you have to keep the Apocrypha in and whatever else. Um, and then later on it was removed, which I support the removal of it. Um, because you don't want people to get confused and to think that it was Scripture. But there you have the New Testament of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ right here. So... The apocryphal books, they say, well, it's part of the, you know, it's, it was in the original, originally in the King James Bible. Well, between the Testaments for its historical purposes, you can read it. Again, Christians back then, they, they were a little bit more intelligent than the ones of today, right? But it's not part of the inspired text. The Roman Catholic Bibles, if you look at a Roman Catholic Bible, they actually have these books of the Bible mixed in with the Old Testament books. That's the difference. It's very important to understand that. So, we get in through here. Um, this is not a red letter edition, as you can see. It is just all in black. There you have the Epistle of Paul, the Apostle to the Ephesians. Right there. Paul to Philemon. And I don't know if there's much in the back here. Uh, the book of Revelation. And yeah, it goes to the chapter 22 there and finish, <laughs> finish. And you have one piece of paper, but I don't think you're going to be taking many notes in this one. This one is just more of a for show. This is a, but a very beautiful Bible, certainly one that um, if you're really into collecting Bibles, this would be a neat one to have in your home. Just to show people, this is what the Bible would have looked like way back there in 1611. They weren't printing little hand-sized, you know, copies and things till later. So, um, I think that there were some, I should say, but the, the most, you know, I think Tyndale's translation might have been smaller, but um, these are designed for being in up on pulpits inside church buildings and things, which there's issues there, but... Uh, just a beautiful, beautiful reproduction of the 1611 King James Bible. So if you're looking for a compact Bible, this is not the one for you. Okay, this one's a little bit thick. <laughs> All right, uh, not exactly an easy to carry Bible. Um, I know somebody made a comment the one time, they was a picture of me reading it like this, and they said, you look like some kind of little elf or something reading a, you know, a regular Bible. <laughs> Well, you know, but uh, definitely a major collectible Bible. Very beautiful Bible. And um, there are other, there's another edition. The King James Bible, when it came out in 1611, of course, they were updating spelling and, and there was a couple areas where they had printing errors and, and things like that. Any book goes through that. You have to revise it and, and whatever. Doesn't mean it needs to be retranslated like the Catholics try to do with their revised version. And there were others that, that also came out with their own uh, Bible versions. Um, of course, the, the Roman Catholics had their Dewey Reims translation, which actually came out the year before the King James Bible, came out in 1610. But, you know, people had tried to make their own versions of the Bible, and they failed. And then Westcott and Hort were supposed to come out, two unsaved scholars were supposed to come out and be part of a a revision committee in the late 1800s and what they did is they introduced a whole new Bible it was known as the revised version of 1881 which I have here in my collection I've showed it in other videos I won't show it here but and then it opened the floodgates and then it was you know the revised standard version well the American standard version then the revised standard version the 
and you know, New American Standard, New NI, New NI, or uh, New International Version, New King James, and New Living Translation, and they just keep coming out with new ones because there's a lot of money to be made with these Bibles. So uh, you say, well, what are you going to do with the other Bibles that you showed? Well, let me grab them here. I have quite a stack of them here. These very nice Bibles. Um, these ones right here, these beautiful King James Bibles. What am I going to do with them? Well, the ones that were gifted to the ministry, obviously I don't feel right giving them away, unless it would be to a member of my immediate family. I already gave a Bible to my wife. My son needs a Bible, so at some point he'll get to pick one. But um, what do I do with my King James Bibles? I have a number of church Bible publisher ones up here, a few other ones, nice ones around. A lot of King James Bibles I've picked up over the years. People send me boxes of King James Bibles. Um, what do I do with them? I give them away. Um, I have never sold a King James Bible to anyone, and I never will. Um, it's just not going to happen. Uh, don't email me or write me or whatever else. I don't, I don't really do a public email address um, because of just the huge amount of traffic that we get uh, writing and, and things. And, you know, I, I, I've been snowed under for many years now, so... I'm sorry I can't be in touch with more people, but uh, when you run a, a ministry like this and it has worldwide exposure, what can I do? But um, I can't just have somebody write me and say, hey, I really like the one Bible. Could you please give it to me? I don't know. I don't know you. Um, so these Bibles go to people that I meet locally, and I can talk to you face to face and whatever, and I, I love that opportunity. Um, I remember there was a young girl that had gotten saved years ago, and I brought a big stack of Bibles in, and I just said, put them before I said, go through them, pick which one you want. And she was just, she was so excited, and just picked one, and she literally held it, and she just kind of hugged it, you know, she, I can't do it because of, because of my microphone here, but she just held it, and she said, oh, thank you so much, and I live for that. I love to give away King James Bibles, so... Please pray the Lord leads the right people to me so I can give them a good Bible. Um, but what was the purpose of this video? Uh, the purpose of this video is to show you that there are some really beautiful King James Bibles out there. And in my opinion, um, if I was forced into a situation where I had to leave my home, I've often thought about that. And what would be the one thing that I would want to take that I wouldn't be willing to let behind? I know what it would be, my Bible. Um, if you can't afford one of these really expensive ones, get a, get a church Bible publisher's King James Bible. Get a, get a nice custom one. Um, get a good one. Write your notes in it and things, things the Lord shows you. Uh, underline things, highlight things. Uh, get to know that Bible. I can literally, in my mind, my regular preaching Bible, uh, I know where verses are on the page and I know what collar they are. I've collar categorized them. Uh, I, can, I can think of right where they're at. And sometimes I'll actually use other Bibles just to keep my mind from fixating too much on, it's on you know, this page on the top left-hand corner. You know, it's good to know the scripture references. But uh, the, the beautiful thing is when you become familiar with a Bible and it becomes just like a, a familiar sword on the battlefield, you get, to, you, you get used to going through and you get to charging through the enemy and they say, how can you prove that Jesus Christ is God? Let me show you in my King James Bible. It's a beautiful thing. How can you prove? What, how do you get saved? How, what must I do to be saved? Let me show you. You're right to it. It's a great thing. I mean, if you can't afford anything, well, go to a dollar store and get a King James Bible there. But... Uh, don't, don't get into this online stuff and these Kindle editions of the King James Bible and whatever else. I have had the same old King James Bible and it's been with me hiking up and down mountains, crossing rivers, you know, in my backpack as I'm wading through and things. I mean, I've taken that thing winter and rain and, you know, driving and, and all over the place. It's been with me for a long time, and it, it, you develop this rapport with that Bible. 
uh, might sound strange, but that, that Bible will be there for you in hard times. And, uh, and it'll, it will encourage you and it will remind you of your future. Um, there's no better way to spend your money than on a King James Bible. Uh, the economy right now is very, very volatile. There's a lot of talk about hyperinflation as the America is printing all kinds of money and other countries are having financial difficulties as well. Um, should you buy gold? Should you buy silver? Should you invest in Bitcoin or other cryptocurrencies? Should you invest in the stock market? Should you invest in this or that? Uh, it's all volatile. There's one thing that you can invest in and it'll never let you down. Ever. King James Bible. These books have led many, many people into a into peace and um, and an understanding of where they're going to go when they die. Um, get a good King James Bible is my ad advice to you. Save up your money and get a good one, and then you carry that thing with you. Don't let anybody ever take your King James Bible from you. Bunch of devils out there, and and uh, we're going to pass laws because the Bible's hate literature. Pass all the laws you want to. I don't care. You're not taking this book, you know, like the old, uh, uh, what the actor Charlton Heston or whatever the guy's name is, you know, Tate holds up his gun and he says, from my cold dead hands. Well, guess what? From my cold dead hands, you're not getting my King James Bibles. Not happening. Uh, no way. I'll die first. Um, so, hope you enjoyed the video. I enjoyed making it. It's been on my list to do for a while. And, um... I recommend Church Bible Publishers, number one, first and foremost, because your money is going to go to um, people that are going to print King James Bibles and King James Bibles only. Uh, you don't like those, you, you like the options of R.L. Allen or Schuyler or Cambridge. Well, there, there's other ones out there too, and other nice ones. I didn't go through all of them, um, but that's up to you. Uh, if you want one that's really beautiful, kind of as a centerpiece of your home, you can get the big one, or this one up here, the 1769. Again, I didn't really finish my explanation of that. The 1611 went through different revisions, and it was finished in 1769. So if you pick up a King James Bible like this, it's a 1769 edition, which just means they had a few issues of, of spelling and whatever else. But as I said in one of my videos, um, you don't go to a gun shop and say, I'll take a, a, a Colt model... 1996 or a Colt model 2018. Now you say I want a 1911 pistol, 45 automatic. It's known as the 1911. Well, this King James Bible is known as the 1611, even though it's actually a 1769. It's more updated and uh, nothing wrong with that. It was not changed in the sense of, you know, doctrinally or anything. You're not going to be holier if you use, you know, if you carry this big behemoth around you know if you're carrying this thing around it doesn't make you somehow holier you know than if you carry this one around okay <laughs> you can carry this one and have the same authority as this king james bible over here the 1611 this one will put you in better shape though i can promise you that <laughs> but that's going to be it for the video uh, please do take my advice don't get the electronic little stupid King James Bibles and whatever else. Um, get a paper King James Bible. Uh, they can change the stuff online at any time. Uh, come in there and mess with the digital King James Bibles. Um, and there's, I mean, you really want to have a, a King James Bible that's tied to a cell phone or some little electronic device and the power goes out and you can't charge it and you're, how are you going to read the Word of God? How are you going to find comfort in that? Um, you know, all the, all the many miles that I've hiked with my King James Bible in my backpack going to remote locations to preach the Word of God, I never had to worry about my battery dying, okay, from my Bible. Uh, it was there for me all the time. And uh, we're driving along and my wife says, oh, I, I want to look up a, a verse. Get it out of the backpack. Here you go. Look at it. It's not, oh, I'm not getting good reception right now. Just wait or something. Paper. Paper King James Bible. That's what I recommend. So that's going to be it. I'm going to put some links to some other videos here at the end. And uh, we'll see you in upcoming videos. 
And again, thank you very much for watching.